Hey Gators. Oh. Hey Gators, I wanted to uh, uh, welcome everyone as we view our first gen workshop. Uh, we're fortunate to have the Director of Career Development, Ms. Roxanne Bohack, here with us today. Uh, Roxanne and her department are doing great things. As you know, if you've watched any of my other um, workshops, I am always pushing all of our students to visit uh, the Career Development Office as their staff and everything that they offer is just top notch. Um, and part of that reason is because of the wonderful director, Roxanne Bohack, who is here today to kind of talk to us about interviewing and um, resume. So without further ado, all yours, Miss Roxanne. <laughs> Thanks, Derek, I appreciate that. Um, and also you referring students to our department, having the opportunity to talk about uh, career development and what we do. And I know in this series last week, you had the pleasure to, to uh, hear from Richard Zapp. He is our online coordinator. Um, and if you are online students, he, he's probably helped you or he's, he's a great resource uh, within our department. So uh, when Derek asked me to talk about first generation type of resumes, I, I said, well, what is that exactly? So it got me thinking, um, you know, it kind of falls in line with, you know, I'm a first generation college student. So I thought when I was in school, um, I, was, I was a little lost at first, well, a lot lost. Uh, I just didn't know um, where to start um, when it came to exploring career paths. We just, we may have, I, I'm a Youngstown State University graduate, we may have had all those resources on campus for development. We might have had TRIO programs. I'm, I'm not sure. It was a little bit of time ago, um, but, you know, I wasn't aware of them. And um, I just, I started school and I said, this is kind of what I like to do. I like to write. So I went to journalism and I had a really great, awesome experiences and I'm a firm believer in when you open the doors and, and talk to people and job shadow and network and, and you're in the right type of atmosphere that things happen. Um, you know, they don't just happen, you have to work for them. But, you know, I had some mentors and I didn't know they were even mentors along the way, but they steered me in the right direction and I got some really great experience from it. But I think I would have been on a clearer path and more focused in the beginning if I would have more direction. So first generation, you know, I, I didn't have mom and dad to say, what do I do? You know, they just said, you're go, you, you know, go to school, good luck, good, good grades. And they were supportive in their own way, but I didn't have a direction of that. So the great thing about Eastern Gateway, you know, you're involved in Trio Scholars. I can't say enough great things about the program, everyone in it, and uh, from Derek to Brittany, you have great support. And another reason you have that support, it's not just because it's a program you're involved in, it's how they are connected and they collaborate with different departments. So that's one reason why career development is in here. Um, I wanna share with you uh, a, a small PowerPoint that I put together here. Um, one moment, please. So, these are just my thoughts that I put together with things that I think will be most helpful from when you're getting started. Um, and when you're getting started, that doesn't mean that you, this might be your you know, third or fourth semester here, but when you're getting started with career exploration and really getting down to what you need to be doing for your success. The tools that you learn here in school are gonna help you and you're just gonna keep building upon that. So how does that all start, you know, with resume creation and career exploration? So when you take those terms alone, it's scary. It's overwhelming. What do you do? Oh my gosh, what are the, you know, the basics I need to know? Where do I start? There's a lot of questions associated with that. Um, so of course, reach out to career development. We would be more than happy to, to walk you through these steps. But if you can get started on your own, these are my suggestions for you. Start now, um, you know, slowly start planning where you want to be. Start visualizing, you know, a career that you want, that you see yourself in. Um, narrow down and talk things through. A lot of times we talk to students and they're on one career path. Uh, they're taking courses and they have an idea of what they want to do. They have a major picked. Uh, they might even have some after plans of where they want to go in terms of university, bachelor's degree, so on and so forth. But 
really, if they talk things through with us, they already kind of know what they want to do. They know their strengths. Um, and it's just about, okay, let's talk it through. Let's talk about the resources out there and how you can really nail down career paths on what you like to do. So I always say find a mentor. I, I talked earlier about, I didn't even know I had mentors because um, they didn't define themselves as mentors. Typically you'll meet them through, you know, when you're talking with Derek or Brittany or myself or uh, an admissions rep. Those can start being mentors for you. They're connections within the community or networking or just some really helpful advice or hearing their story. You know, I, it'd be interesting because I always like to hear from coworkers, like, how did you get started? How did you end up here? You know, and, and everyone has really, really interesting stories of how they ended up in higher ed, um, you know, whether that was a target, a goal, or it just kind of aligned in their life and it happened through a series of events. But find a mentor. Uh, industry mentors are always a plus. You know, if you are 100%, you know the industry you want to be in, you know career titles that you're going after um, or companies you want to work for, within those sectors, uh, finding mentors is really important. Someone that works in a field that you want to be in and ask about their story, hear their steps. And uh, sometimes you can mimic those steps and, and get to, you know, where you want to be with that. If you're just not sure and you're just like, I am so, I, I don't know what I want to do. There's always career assessments. I'm a big ONET fan. So um, this link, if I if we kind of go on here real quick, this is a busy site. It's called ONET. Uh, you can just Google ONET. And if you want to take notes to the exact uh, link to that, uh, there's a lot of information on here. But if you navigate it through this quick search up here, um, let's just say, you know, you want to be a nurse. That's what you want to do. You know, you can go through it and just see what are some, you know, bright outlooks for nursing. Uh, say, you know, you want to be an RN, you're on this path, click on that. And you can see a bunch of different sample titles uh, for some specialties. You can go through what your daily tasks are going to be, the knowledge that's most important, your skill set that's important really break it down and read through to see what you'll be doing on a daily basis. You can go down and see, you know, what type of degrees, um, you know, that you will need for this field. Um, you know, if you're independent, um, your work value, so a supportive type of person, all of this is important because these are also great tools to start building that resume where you want to be, you know what your career path is, and then this is a great site. It's just a wealth of information. All of us want to know how much money we can make. That's part of our career plan. I, I'm an advocate of it should be on there. You're buying milk and cereal at the store. You know how much it is. I think that should be like for jobs too. More and more employers are posting salaries on there because it's important for a lifestyle. Say you, um, I'm going to go with Ohio, but but no matter where you are in the country, you can find your salary exp expectations um, for what you could be making. So we'll go to Ohio. Um, we'll just leave it at that. Hit go. And you can see salary trends. Um, so in Ohio, um, you can expect to make a median salary as an RN as at 67.5, you know, so plus you can kind of compare that if you're looking to move within the United States um, and it, it, it really breaks it down. Some people like to know hourly what they'll, they'll be making. Um, that's about 32 bucks an hour. Realistically, I, I'm in Youngstown, um, based out of Youngstown, it's more maybe 25 to 30, but you know, you, you could you can hit that 32 locally. So, you know, again, it's not all about money, but that's a big factor, especially when you're, when you're planning what you want to do and why, and you can go up from there. So that's just like my favorite site. It has so much. And um, if you're overwhelmed with it, we'd be more than happy to go through it with you, but on your free time, or when you're starting your plan, take a look at ONET. That's one resource that that's free and has updated information. Um, they even go into job postings and, and different things, but I really use it a lot when I'm helping students build resumes. Um, when, when you're kind of trying to wordsmith and you're stuck a little bit, 
that that's a good resource. Um, also, we use my plan. We use Handshake. Uh, well, we are in the works of using Handshake. This is going to be really big for students. So we're really excited to hopefully roll that out in the spring. But these are just we're trying to create more networking opportunities for students that would and uh, so you can see some jobs, see how the job descriptions are even written out to see how you can start building that plan. Um, and from job descriptions, you know, they're giving you a roadmap to your resume. So, you know, you can just say, okay, I could do this. I'm excited about these job descriptions. And then there's going to be some things you're like, I don't know if I can do this or if I'm that interested in it, but, you know, just at least, you know, knowledge is your power to know what you want to do and what your next steps are. And always research careers. You know, I say career paths a lot, pathways, different job titles, you know, there's different, you start off in one type of program and you major in something and then you, from there, it, it kind of grows and different career paths that stem from where you are now too. So resumes are kind of a huge undertaking. We understand that and our department has worked really hard on customized resume templates per program. We are involved in a lot of curriculum. Some of you may have us involved with your class assignments. Some of you may not, uh, but our services remain the same. We are here to help you with that in those beginning steps of starting a resume. So we have basic resumes, more you know, student-focused resumes that touches on those uh, relevant courseworks, transferable skills, and things that we'll go into here soon. But also we have specialized resumes. If you know you want to be on the IT track, you know, why not have that specialized resume that's customized for the IT track and then further that with customization per job descriptions. Uh, so, you know, there's processes to it, but you have to start by just being comfortable with, you know, what a basic resume is, or instead of basic, we like to say working. So your working resume, you know, creating that starting somewhere. I never want you to say I was just a waitress or I'm just a teller or I'm just anything because all of these jobs that you're just doing are creating multiple things for you. Um, customer service experience, soft skills, technical skills, transferable skills. Also, you know, it's resume building and what are you getting from these jobs? It's not about putting on there, I'm just a teller, I'm just a customer service rep at TJ Maxx, I am a, um, and then that's how you can kind of focus it. So if you know now what you want to do, and you know you're working these jobs, getting through school, paying the bills, take what you need from those jobs and transfer that onto your resume. I have a couple links in here because Richard, I was talking about before, has created a wealth of videos um, so our team either has employer spotlights where we are talking to employers at their locations and they're telling us what they need, whether they're technical or soft skills, or how to create a resume in five minutes, you know, the simple basics of that. So these are YouTube videos that kind of describe that, um, you know, you can take a look at those and it kind of puts things in perspective of like, this is not that overwhelming and this is how you start. Um, and also LibGuides. So we have um, an EGCC library of full of LibGuides. So from basic resume templates to cover letters, to references, um, everything career development that you're gonna need to know to start that portfolio is on our LibGuides. So if you're interested, uh, you know, take note to that. I'm not gonna have you watch the video now, but it's pretty cool. It's interesting. And, and it gives you a glimpse to see, uh, you know, the the work that we've put into this and we listen to what our students need and we try to provide that back so with that in mind if there's ever anything that you know you want us to make a video on career related uh we're more than happy to do so so i always say hey start with a good template we get a lot of resumes in hundreds of resumes a semester um it, it's not they're, they're not always terrible, but they're not always great. You know, we have, we're so used to them. Um, you know, when you look at resumes every day, we can pretty quickly say, okay, you need to change this, this or that. But if you don't, you know, you don't know. And this ranges from students that maybe have no work experience 
uh, their first semesters, um, first gen college student, first semester college student to we work with a lot of union students, you know, so we have some students across the country that have 30 years of experience and they're looking for a whole new career change and Eastern Gateway has given them those tools and with this new degree, how the heck do they, they convert all those pages into what they want to do now. So, you know, it's all about those, those good templates, customized, knowing where to start with those. Um, we will be here to help you with that. But I encourage you to not just Google a resume template and put it in. Um, you know, we have some pretty good tips on those LibGuides too. One pagers are key. Employers and hiring managers don't have a ton of time. They quickly want to see those skills. Don't focus on not having a ton of experience. Um, you know, focus on let's let's say some relevant coursework that you're taking that's important in the field show that you've done your research, show that you've looked at job descriptions and incorporate that the best you can in your resume. That, those are my best tips to, to start a good working template. Customize uh, to fit your skill set. You know, you always wanna customize a resume. I tell people, okay, you have one, let's say more generic or working resume. And you don't customize it. So say you send this one resume out to 100 employers that you did not customize. You might get one call back, two callbacks if you're lucky in today's workforce, maybe three. You know, they just want people to show up sometimes. But if you're really committed and you want to get started in that right path for you, that right job, take the time and customize your resume for every job that you send it out to and only send out 20 resumes that are customized. And what if you get 10 callbacks? It's worth it. You know, it's, it's not, you quickly get frustrated when you're sending all those resumes out and you don't get callbacks. You get so discouraged. I've been there. I've done it. Um, I remember graduating uh, with my bachelor's thinking, I sent my resume out. Well, it was probably a five page resume or something. And it had nothing relevant to the job description. I really didn't have anyone review my resume because I didn't know. So these are things, these are tools that you know now, and it's going to save you a lot of frustration down the road. Don't overlook jobs. And like I said, these life experiences that you have, your soft skills, relevant coursework, and all of those jobs that got you to where you are now, or that you're doing now that you don't love, at least you know, hey, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life, but you are learning valuable skills. And when I say soft skills, it's, it was kind of like a buzzword um, back a, a couple of years ago, and it's been trending. People are like, what are they really? People say they want them. What are they? You know, it's, it's your work ethic. Um, it's kind of hard to put that in a resume, but, you know, if they see longevity in jobs, um, that you've moved up in companies, that kind of proves your work ethic. Uh, I'm talking about, you know, good customer service, good dialogue, communication, um, you know, uh, 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 loyalty within companies. Those are all important soft skills that you could incorporate within your resume. And I say life skills because, you know, a lot of us, we have families at home, we're juggling jobs and extracurriculars and housework, you know, multitasking, um, you know, you're the organ, you keep an organized calendar and, and you're running your household. You know, there's ways that we can incorporate those daily tasks that you do that are so important, whether a coordinating, you know, I was a coordinator. Um, now I'm a director. I, my life is coordinating, you know, with, with departments, with, uh, my, my schedule, trying to figure out what's going on with the husband and the kids, you know, my life is coordinating. And, and I feel like that's a really important soft skill that I have uh, that I could reflect in a resume and employers are looking for it. Another thing is Google soft skills. And, and if you know what you want to do and say paralegal, what are important soft skills and paralegal, try to customize that within a resume. Uh, I don't expect you to know how to do that. So again, we can help you do that, kind of go through what you have. I always encourage students, if you don't know where to start, you know, uh, write it all out. Write it all out on a resume. Talk about every duty that you're doing, and we can kind of help you go through it, eliminate what you don't need, elaborate what you do need, and combine some skills.
And I say relevant coursework because that's important. Your Eastern Gateway experience is the most relevant to employers. This is the most recent. This is going to be on top of your resume, you know, that your newly obtained degree in. Uh, really focus on that. Be proud of that and share your, your course knowledge because those are going to be important. I always say research career pathways. So this is your step now. Where do you want that to go? So what are the pathways that are going to get you there? So whether it's nursing, you know, um, say you start off medical assistant and you know you want to do LPN to RN, that, that's kind of a pathway. Um, so wherever you are, think long-term and, uh, and that's how you can kind of create those steps. Uh, and I always say, make an appointment with us. You know, we'd be happy to help you. And, and I know, you know, Trio Scholars has a wealth of information. We work with different departments all the time and, and we'd be happy to assist you more. So that's kind of what I have. Um, I don't know if there's any questions or... Well, I just wanted... Um... You know, we usually uh, will get, we'll post your information um, or, you know, the department in general uh, so that students, while they view this in Canvas, can reach out. Um, we, we know how busy you are, Director Bohack, and we wanted to thank you. Uh, we were honored to have you take some time and work with us today. Um, I know part of the reason I really believe in career development uh, department is it's it's that blend, right? You do offer services like the resume help, but at the same time, you're also developing our students so that when they do move on, they have some skills to fall back on for, for this type of stuff. And it's, it's why I really believe in your department. And again, we appreciate you taking your time and um, we will definitely post your information. Thank you for not only providing us with um, information, but also some resources for our students. Um, it's why I reach out or refer all our students to you because you guys are the best in the business. So um, we wanna thank you again and appreciate it so much. Thank you. And if 